Hey, it's Dr. Rick, right quick. I'm here to pick up uh, my 17-year-old, and so I'm sitting out waiting on her to come out. And uh, I thought I would come back uh, and talk to you about something that's obviously hot right now. So I'm gonna talk about it uh, from uh, a perspective that I personally see things. There's a lot of debate going on about the Super Bowl. Uh, everything from the teams actually playing to uh, what people thought about the halftime show. Um, you know, uh, did the halftime show do anything for race relations for the NFL uh, and everything in between? And there are some heated debates going on on both sides of that particular discussion. There is, you know, a lot of push back and talk about, you know, why are you, why were you even watching it and, and everything in between. And, and I get it. Everybody has a point. And something that I learned from studying uh, Malcolm X was um, patience. Uh, I could not have come as far as I have in the work that I've done in the black community without patience. Uh, Brother Malcolm said that we have to remember when we have come to a point of revelation, when we have come to a point of a certain level of consciousness, and we are aware of how things are going at a different level than the masses, we must, we must always remember that we weren't always where we are right now, and we need to deal with our brothers and sisters accordingly. We need to understand that we all don't have an epiphany on the same day and the same hour, that we don't all get to uh, the the finish line or a new play space at the same time. In fact, some of us were illuminated or uh, awakened for the purpose of helping those who were not and to provide a sense of guidance, a sense of purpose, a sense of direction for those, even when they were resistant to, resistant to uh, the teachings that you may be putting forth as a way to work with people, even when they're not trying to hear what you're saying at a certain level, as a way to be influential and powerful. And I think we lose that in the sense of trying to force people to see a certain standard or behave in a certain way. I believe that in order for us to be empowered, we do need to operate at a certain standard. We need, do need to have a certain strategy, a certain agenda, a certain way of moving, a certain way of dealing with people outside of our community that we don't currently have, that we don't currently execute. I understand that, but we're not gonna get there by tearing each other down and criticizing each other. That, that actually works uh, to the benefit of those who benefit from our oppression, from our, our um, lack of uh, fluidity and power. And so what we have to do is we have to look at it in a sense of what should we be doing and how. And when it comes to the game, for those people who watch the game, I get it. For those who cheer for the game, I get it. For those who watch uh, the halftime show, I definitely get it. There's a lot of history there. There's a lot of connectivity there, especially for some older heads that are over 40. Um, that remember hip hip hop hip hop at a different era. Uh, I get it, and uh, all of that is good. And I'm not here to bash anybody. Here is my thing when it comes to the question of did that advance uh, race relations for the. NFL, And remember that this was put out long before there was a lawsuit against the NFL uh, for racial discrimination in the hiring processes of coaches and front office uh, executives. So this has been a process going on. And from what I understand, it was supposed to be something to do with uh, bringing Jay-Z on in the role that he has with the NFL. And I think that first and foremost, one of the things that we have to realize is we are behind in understanding how things work. What we're dealing with is a bunch of wealthy people playing their position to benefit. And I mean everybody involved. Um, I have nothing against the people that performed last night, but understand they benefited from it. No, they did not get paid, but uh, if you do the research, uh, just in streams alone, the increase in streams for people who have uh, performed on the uh, 
Super Bowl ha performed during the Super Bowl halftime show over the past 10 years, uh, let's say the past four or five, streams have increased anywhere from 175% to 300 plus percent uh, increases in streams. So the exposure and the awareness brings about it with it a benefit, not to men mention other bookings and opportunities that come from it and a bunch of other things. So they benefited from it. Okay. You never know what else was going on in any endorsement deals outside of that that came as a result of being booked for the halftime show. There's always things being leveraged. The thing is what black people have to really do. And again, this isn't criticizing or attacking anyone for what you did. You did. You did you. And we've got to learn also that until we can create platforms and own platforms, sports platforms, uh, music platforms, film platforms on a grand scale, where we can provide the content, we can provide the talent, we can provide the arena and the resources. There's going to be some intersection. There's going to be some things we're going to participate in that may not be what we really need to be doing if we're going to do it. Because I tell you what, sitting at home whining and pining about what's happening to us doesn't help either. That psychological weight of every waking thought being on what the white man is doing will destroy you. It will literally crush you because what you're going to find out is there are a bunch of things you know that need to happen that you can't get to happen because you can't rally your people quick enough and you're constantly being punched in the gut by it. You've got to learn how to measure your movement, to measure your intensity, to look at the long game and to understand that there's simply going to be some things. You know, there are some people, take the TV out of the house, don't listen to the radio, don't do any of those things. And you've got to find and have a meaningful way of filling that. You know, I do a lot of reading. I do a lot of research. I do a lot of writing. So I have my most. But there are television programs I like normally that, that are centered around human behavior. My wife thinks like, my God, do you watch anything else? Not really. I don't watch a whole lot of uh, sitcoms because I don't think this, our sitcoms portray us. But every time I see a sitcom with a black family, it's some kind of massive ass dysfunction uh, that overshadows any positive uh, presentations that may be at play. I'm not with that. So I tend to just watch things that I can study. And most of it is crime reality, studying people's behavior, studying why they're doing, because it's a part of me understanding what's going on in my community. And when I say my community, I don't mean my personal community. I mean my community as the black community and where people are really suffering and struggling. So in essence, again, here we are. And the thing is, what we should be asking is that instead of, you know, arguing over whether you should have watched it or not, uh, arguing over if their performing had any positive impact on race relations, what we should be asking once again is why don't we own our own? Why are we trying to fix something that they have no desire to fix? Because if they wanted to fix it, it's well within their power to close the gap. It's well within their power to put out an olive branch that actually has merit that says, hey, look, we're going to close the gap. We're going to give you X amount of teams that you can have ownership in. We're going to give players um, certain types of incentive based off of representation. You can't have 72 to 75 percent of the players being black and have no representation in coaching and uh, all that stuff can have been dealt with a long time ago. There's no desire to do that. What they do is they deal with crisis. When it becomes an obvious issue and it's put in the forefront and they can't push it under the rug, they come up with a uh, band-aid. They come up with an immediate response that quiets the noise, but they never really deal with the source at the core. And that source at the core is so tainted that it cannot remain in place and be fixed. It has to be totally deconstructed and it has to be built with an understanding of the total racial dynamic in play and everybody having an influence. Since that will never happen, blacks have to have an understanding that the way that we're going to actually move, the way we're actually going to be respected is when we start to take our dollars and our talents out of places that don't serve us. 
that don't serve our values, our interests, and our principles, and we start to put them into our own place where we own it, where it has value, where we protect the value, and we reap the benefits. And then we also put ourselves in the power because there are certain places that we are simply excelling in the area of talent. And since we're excelling in the area of talent, which is the commodity, we also should have uh, the predominance of the ownership in said market because we are the force that moves it. We have the say so and we have the ability to pull ourselves out of situations in which we can't own and create ownership. That should be the conversation. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. What I want to say to you is this. We have to start thinking better. We have to start being respectful of one another, arguing with one another, tearing each other down, slanging and hurling insults isn't the way to do it. Uh, with that being said, uh, we're in the middle of a fundraiser for the Black Men Lead, right? A passage initiative. Uh, we've been talking about this for six weeks now. Uh, we have gone five weeks beyond the total, what, what should have been the total right fundraiser, and we have not even reached 10% of what we meant, were meant to uh, raise. Um, we've done $500 in six weeks. Uh, I mean, you don't have to know the operational costs to know that you can't do anything on a grand scale to help young black boys and in in young black men in the way that we need help right now with the uh, spike in suicides, um, the growing numbers in incarceration and in violence, uh, the growing numbers of black males who are harming black females. All of these things are things that are dealt with within the program and we are not getting the support that we need. So once again, we are asking for your support. Uh, I made the announcement in an earlier video that anyone who uh, donates $100 or more will receive a free rapid change breakthrough session, which is a part of the program of one of my companies, the Visionetics Institute, that's about helping people truly advance themselves and what they see themselves doing. So in other words, to give us a, posi a greater position of influence and power of our own lives in the areas of success, that means something to us. Everybody defines success differently. You should. Success should be uh, constructed around the things that matter to you, not what everyone else says it is. Yeah, a part of success has to be financial stability, financial independence, because without it, you are controlled by someone else, so you really truly don't have uh, complete autonomy at a level that allows you to be successful and live life on your terms. And so ownership and financial stability has to be a part of it, but it's so much more. And I do that. And the Rapid Change Breakthrough Session is a $350 value that I'm giving to anyone who donates $100 or more to the Black Men Lead Right of Patches Initiative. On that note, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, hope everything is uh, going well with you guys, and we will talk soon. Everybody take care. I'm out.